Okay. So I've been thinking this about this a lot, right? Because as many uh, of the listeners know, I didn't want to stop acting. I There's a lot of stuff that I have been forced into that uh, are not of my choosing, are not of my doing. And to be kind of like the captain of your own life for decades and have that taken away and not just taken away, but uh, confined, put, you know, intentionally putting you in a, a the most nightmarish situation, uh, specifically crafted for what your version of hell is. And I, I'm getting to the thankful part. Just hold on. Don't worry. That sounds <laughs> terrible. And for the longest time, I have been totally justifiably full of rage, full of rage at everyone that has failed me, uh, failed at everyone that was supposed to protect me or was hired to protect me, um, total failure of all kinds of institutions and and I, I've been so angry and it's really hard not to be you know when when literally everything is stripped everything is stripped away from you and you don't have any control over it and so much is so inaccurate and and the loss is so profound so profound um, it's so painful and so horrible and so absolutely confusing as to how there can be failures on so many different levels by so many different people. And it has taken away everything. And for the longest time, I have been livid, Danny, just livid. And then I made a decision last week to forgive all of them. Just forgive them all. And one side, like, and I thought that was going to be the hardest thing I ever had to do. It wasn't that hard, actually. Like, and I'm sure things will, like, come up again and I'll have to, like, tamp it back down. Mm -hmm. And it's especially hard, you know, as things happen. Um, you know, sometimes it's easier to forgive people decades later, you know, when you've had a time to go to therapy and all that other kind of stuff. But I realized that... That as horrible and painful as everything has been, and just truly, like, soul-crushing in the way you're like, I don't know how I'm going to keep going. I am, once I let go of the rage, they always say it's like hardest to get rid of your favorite sin, right? And I realized, like, my favorite sin was... The anger. And um, once I got rid of it, I could see clearly that this life is very short. We're going to be dead a lot longer than we're alive. And um, I'm pretty tough. I can take an awful lot. So even if I am in this state or in this country or in this poverty or in this lack of health care, this yeah. pa pair of pajamas the gift that it has given me is i've gotten to be wealthier than most people will ever be i have gotten to be mostly because other people did all this stuff for me you know um more attractive and dressed up and have nicer clothes and all that other kind of stuff and fancy people doing my hair and um, free fancy make, you know, I've gotten that more than anyone will ever get in their lifetime. 
I've gotten to be more famous than, you know, almost 8 billion people were, will ever get to be. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to travel the world, see almost everything, experience almost everything, own almost everything that I ever wanted to. And now I get the absolute privilege to experience everything opposite. To experience poverty and humility. And I've never needed anything from anyone in my life. And I've had to beg people for help. And that's like a really weird position to be in. I've had to give up control of almost everything. I've had to wander the streets at night, not knowing where I'm going to rest my head. And Danny, I'm so grateful for all of it. Because how many people ever get this wide a range of the complete human experience? Almost nobody is lucky enough to get to experience it all. And there is beauty in the hardship. There's a friendship that you, like everyone in show business ditched me. It didn't matter if uh, things were totally untrue or not didn't matter you know this thing they're just like i'm out of here and um the beauty of seeing the people that stick with you of getting to know what it's like when people don't kiss your butt you know when it's like it's um and to really be humbled and appreciate the smallest things, the smallest bits of kindness, the tiniest bits of luck, which are very few and far between. And I feel like because of this, my understanding for so many people on this earth has just grown exponentially. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever get anything back. I don't know if anything will ever be okay again. I don't know if I'll ever have a roof over my head again. I don't know if I'll ever own a car again. I don't, I don't know any of it, Danny. But I do know that all of it has changed me for the better. And I am so grateful for that opportunity that God has given me to experience all of it. So that's what I'm grateful for. And I, I, I genuinely mean it. And it was funny that I, I couldn't see it for the longest time because of that anger that anger of having everything taken away. Yeah. And it's, it's like, oh, it's okay. Because not that it really matters. The only thing that matters is the kindness and the love you show people. Mm -hmm. And even now, like, it's, it's terrible. Like, this isn't of, like, you know, my own accord, like, leaving. Um, Everything's been stripped for me, like the ability to walk my own dog, you know, who's aged and my other ones are gone. I don't get to spend any time with them, which is heartbreaking. The ability to help my mom, you know, who's in her 70s, recover from the hurricane that ripped the roof off and, you know, flooded the house. Like it's taken away 
everything. But when you're reduced to nothing, you realize you just get to see how elemental it all is. And, and it's all going to be okay. I don't know how, but someone will. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really grateful for that. So anyway, enough of me. Tell me yeah. what you're grateful for. Well, I, I do just want to say, like, as someone who has not always had a lot myself, but also have, has had a lot of privilege. One thing that I've learned in life is yeah. like somehow, some way, you always find a way to get that next meal and to have something to sleep on and to have a roof over your head. And one of the most beautiful things about, I think, just humanity is that as ugly as humanity can be, there's always those really like good parts of humanity as well. Yeah. And it's crazy to me. Like when you are down and out. Yeah. I think you're right. A lot of the people that you expect would have helped you out often don't. Beep, beep. But, yeah. But what's crazy is that people that you had no idea turn up existed mm -hmm. yeah like they're like guardian angels you know so you know when we and, had my buddy tammy pescatelli on mm -hmm. she was one of those like out of the woodwork anything you need man i got yeah. your back i was like damn didn't yeah. see that one coming yeah. not because there's anything wrong they're like just like everyone in entertainment you know yeah anyway i didn't mean to cut you off sorry no that's okay but i mean i think just along those lines um that's one thing that I'm grateful for is because I've had those people in my life at many points in time, you know, and I know that like, I mean, speaking of like right now at this exact moment, um, with the shooting that just happened. Oh, that, I mean, that in was Colorado Springs. Like that's yeah, that was less than two hours south of me. And I was yep. at a gay bar here in Denver when it happened. It could have been me that died that night. Yeah. You know? And as horrible as this is, one thing that I feel is that one thing that terrorists never take into account when they try and take when they try and strike fear into a people's heart mm -hmm. is that their actions only unite us more. And only make us like look out for each other that much more and care for one another that much more. Um, and I think that's just like human nature. You know what I mean? Not for everybody, but there's always going to be someone yeah. that will be there to look out for you. Yeah. And so to someone that's like in your position, I can only imagine what it's like to have gone from one life to a completely different life but and i know like i've told you this before mm. at least in me you will like i will always have your back and same here, i will man. always make sure if i have to take if i have to if i have to sneak onto a shipping container <laughs> to make it all the way across the world just to make sure you have a place to sleep on a given night like you know what I mean? We, yeah, we find no, ways. I, we find ways. We find ways. And, and, and like, also, too, they're like, this has given me, think of your ancestors, right? And think of my ancestors, who, it's going to make me cry, who experienced what I'm living through now. Leaving with nothing. Arriving in a new place where you don't speak the language, where you're struggling to get a job, you're struggling to get everything, you don't know anyone, and they had it so much worse because when they say goodbye to their families, they knew they were never going to see them again, not in this life. 
And that's another thing, like what a blessing technology is. What a blessing I had the privilege of coming to another country, and I don't want to jinx it yet, but um, they gave me the right to be here. You know, what a, so I didn't have, you know, I, I mean, we'll see. I, I don't get it. I don't want to jinx it, but uh, knock on wood, if everything goes as it's uh, supposed to, which nothing ever does. I'm used to that now, but uh you know, where I won't have to work as an illegal, where you can be taken advantage by everyone because you don't have anyone to go to when people mess with you. It is, it has been like, or even now these poor people fleeing Ukraine. So, um, the congregation that I've been going to here, it was one of the craziest things. This Ukrainian father brought his family here. And then he went back to go to the front line. He has no idea whether he's going to live or die. And if he's ever going to see his family again. And... It really puts into perspective that, um, yeah, everything is so crazy hard and way harder than I've ever experienced. But it's not that hard. And I'm really grateful that I don't have to make the decision between life or death. So, and I'm really grateful. For all of our ancestors that made all these things happen for us. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like John Green that was saying the other day, they were like, it's, someone had asked him, do you know who he, he's like a historian? Mm -hmm. Someone had asked him, they were like, is this the worst century to live in? Because sometimes it feels so bleak. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. He's like, there was a time where, you know, the bubonic plague knocked out, I think he said two thirds. It, it depends. So, like, there were different Europe. plagues at different times. But yeah, there were, there were times where like one in 10 lived in different places. You know, there were times yeah. where. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, talk about like a historian at the time. I can't remember where, where it was, but he wrote. Like, he's like, basically, like, if anyone shall ever live to see this, this is what happened. And, like, that's how bleak it was. Wow. That literally you do not know if the human race itself will survive. Right. You know? Right. And you're so, lucky to have a boiled onion. Right. Yeah. 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 For real. And actually, now I'm going to make some damn boiled onions for Thanksgiving. <laughs> But no, I'm I'm grateful for the for the people in my life that helped me continue to survive. Because, like, honestly, it's even the little things that that keep us going. From like conversations like this to you know the bigger things that like you know getting food on the table or getting a roof over your head. Yeah. So the one thing I've realized is it's um it's very easy to be righteous when you're rich. Uh, because you're not really put in situations where you are in a moral dilemma for things like the basic needs for survival. And right. that's been a really interesting perspective to gain. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm grateful. I really am grateful for all of it. Uh, anyway, I hope everyone at home has things they can be grateful for too, whether they're having a rough time or a good time or whatever's going on, you know. Ride the snake of life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
you yeah. know, it's all over the place, man. You just gotta hang on, hang on for dear life and see what happens. But yeah. I'm really grateful to know you. I'm grateful for everyone that listens to us. Uh, yeah. Do us a favor for Thanksgiving and for my birthday, please. Share this podcast with a few other people. If everyone does that, it would be great. Because one thing Danny and I would love to do is people to make even a dollar off of this. Ah, we do it for free anyway. Like, we love you guys. Like, it has nothing to do with, like, like but, like, it would kind of be awesome if, you know, we could even get, like, 30 bucks out of it. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I think we've made about, like, $26 in revenue total. Okay, yeah, but how much but did you put into advertising? That's not profit, yeah. Yeah, like, when that's we're not profit. about all the things that we've spent. Um, right. You know, we're, we're far into yeah. the hole. So, yeah, yeah like the video subscribe on the podcast platforms exactly on youtube uh, for me if you want to go on my link tree on instagram like also you know i think it's 99 cents go buy my comedy special right you want to help me out go buy my comedy special book a cameo you know do do something like that mm-hmm. um i don't want any handouts but you know I'll work, I'll work for the money. I, I, I work for it. I work for it. And that's okay. You know, it's like I said, sometimes you just got to be humble and you got to ask for help. Yep. There we go.